a complete garden tour of the new California garden, some harvest we made this month, some interesting things for you to do in your garden, a delicious recipe, winners of our hyacinth bean giveaway, all this and a lot more in today's episode of the California Garden June 2020 Garden Tour. So let's begin with the garden tour, beginning with the raised beds. As you can see, the raised beds have now established quite well. You can see the plants have grown quite well at this stage. So let's look at what we have in our raised beds. And I'm going to do a walking tour this time. Let me know how you find this walking tour. We have our pineapple ground cherries and this makes an excellent ground cover as you can see. They look beautiful and I should have planted more in this area. You can see the loafers growing quite well. And as far as the onions go, some of the onions are doing really well. As you can see the leaves are quite nice. But some of the onions are not doing that well. So I'll have to see what's going on with the onions. Some of the onions have their leaves turned yellow. In the next bed we have a lot of okras on the far side and you can see some soybeans and some beets that are growing. Although beets are a cool season crop, I still planted a couple of beets and they seem to be doing well now. They were a little stressed out during the hot days. And the okras have been doing okay. I am not too happy with the way the okras have grown but we'll see how they grow for the rest of the season. Peppers. This is our pepper bed which is interplanted with the portulacas. And you can see the portulacas, they add a very nice beautiful color to the bed. This is the giant Marconi pepper. As you can see it's still growing large. We have these cayenne pepper plants. So all in all a lot of different pepper varieties in this pepper bed. And all of them seem to be growing okay. And there are some other pepper varieties as well here growing on this bed. This is again the candy cane pepper, very interesting pepper variety. Moving on to the next bed, we have our tomato bed. Now all our tomato varieties are growing quite well now. You can see the tomatoes, they are now showing up. This is the grape tomato. So all in all, I'm quite pleased with the way the tomatoes have grown. They have grown quite vigorously compared to the other vegetables on the raised beds. And you can see some of these large tomatoes. And the lettuce that's growing right in between the tomatoes. The tomatoes are doing a good job of shading the lettuce seedlings. And you can see some more tomatoes here. So almost all our tomato plants are now producing tomatoes. So we can expect to have a good harvest of tomatoes this month. This one is the salsa tomato. Quite large tomatoes turning slightly red now. So all in all, as I mentioned, this tomato bed is doing quite well. And for the last bed that we have, this is what I called a potpourri bed where I have a lot of different varieties of vegetables planted. We have taro root, eggplant, some kale and the large plants that you see here and towards the back are sunchokes. The sunchokes have really taken off. And you can see the ivy gourd plants on the back on the trellis. And they are producing a lot of ivy gourds now. You can see some watermelon and one lone romanesco. I think there are a couple that I planted. The longevity spinach which is now looking okay. And another watermelon plant. And that completes the tour of our raised beds. Let's now move on to the next section of the garden tour. Which is a tour of our containers. So in our first container we have our Malabar spinach growing. This is growing with the easy trellis as you can see here and I have detailed instructions on how you can make your own trellis for containers in the to do section of the episode. We have the black beauty eggplant which is growing quite well and is producing a very large eggplant as you can see. We have the amethyst eggplant 
we harvested a lot of amethyst eggplants this month and it's still producing a lot of new eggplants our pole beans have been planted and they will be growing on this trellis a wooden trellis that you can see here it's right behind the container and this is almost a 7 foot trellis and it's enough space for these pole beans to grow so there are different options when it comes to adding a trellis to your garden so just be aware that there are a lot of options when it comes to adding a trellis to your garden or your containers and you can do whatever works best for you soybeans we are trying to grow soybeans for the first time this year and these are the ones that are in the container and they are doing okay peppers we have a couple of pepper varieties here the bell pepper as well as the hot chili pepper is the bird's eye chili pepper and in the next container we have just sowed some baby baba okra seeds and this seems to be a very interesting okra variety and it's the first time that we are trying to grow this okra variety in the next container we have pumpkin the pumpkins are growing quite well and they are growing on either side of the container along the ground and this technique works quite well if you have some space around the container we have hyacinth beans that we just planted and this is a next easy trellis inside the container the container trellis and once again i'll have instructions on how you can make your own trellis it's quite easy it's quite cheap and it's a 7 foot trellis after it's installed in the container we have anaheim chili peppers there are four pepper plants that are growing in this container and they seem to be doing a lot better than what they were doing last month in the next container we have cantaloupe there are four cantaloupe plants and they will grow exactly like the pumpkins are growing towards the side we have our husky cherry red tomato this tomato plant was one of the first tomato plants we planted and it's loaded with tomatoes as you can see and we harvested a lot of tomatoes from this tomato plant in the next container we have our millionaire eggplant and as you can see it's a very interesting eggplant variety very much like the japanese type eggplant we have the nombo giant okra in the next container and this is one of the most prolific okra varieties i've seen and we were able to harvest okra from this plant during this month and finally we have sweet corn as someone rightly pointed out in one of our previous videos the sweet corns have taken over the container and they have grown quite large and they have already started producing flowers and we should hopefully be seeing some corn cobs being produced quite soon and that completes the tour of our container garden i hope you enjoyed this container garden tour if you have any questions comments or suggestions please let me know in the comments box below and now let's look at all the harvest we made this month beginning with the amethyst eggplant our amethyst eggplant was growing in this whiskey barrel container and as you can see it's loaded with eggplants the amethyst eggplant is a very interesting eggplant it is resistant to a lot of insects and diseases this was also overwintered from last year and it's still growing quite well producing these beautiful eggplants and we have two such plants growing in this whiskey barrel container and you can see the plant is quite loaded with eggplants and you can't really see them from here but they're all growing underneath all the dense leaves they have and this is a very delicious eggplant as well a little similar to the black beauty but still a little different and some of these eggplants start as purple and they slowly turn into that amethyst color that this eggplant is known for so overall i'm quite pleased with the way this eggplant has grown i think it has given us enough eggplants already and still continues to produce more and more eggplants and here you can look at the harvest it looks beautiful the amethyst eggplant is one of the best eggplants we have grown moving on to the harvest of our brown turkey fig we were growing just one brown turkey fig in this area it's a dwarf variety we are harvesting our first fig here of the season now the brown turkey fig is quite a good looking fig so we decided to give it the taste test and let's see how this fig tastes so you can see here we are cutting open this fig that we just harvested and it's got a nice purple color on the outside the seeds are also a deep reddish purple 
and a little white flesh. Now the taste of this brown turkey fig was excellent. You can use it in salads or you can just eat them raw. They taste amazing. Moving on to our ivy gourd plants. Our ivy gourds were growing on this trellis as you can see on the far side of the raised bed and it did produce a lot of ivy gourds. Now the ivy gourds are a very interesting vegetable and I've posted some videos on how you can cook something after you've harvested your ivy gourds from your garden. And all these ivy gourds need is good trellising. As long as you have a good trellis and it can grow to a large area, the ivy gourd plant will keep producing ivy gourds. And remember that we just had a makeshift trellis here. Over a period of time, I will be adding a more permanent trellis to this area. And you can see the harvest, it looks pretty good. And we were able to harvest ivy gourds on several days. So we got a good supply of ivy gourds from our garden this year. Now let's move on to our Nombo Giant Okra Harvest. This is one of the best okra varieties that I've grown. And you can see here the okras are quite large. And they do produce a lot of okras. And we're just growing this in a container. We have four plants growing in this container. And there's a little training for my son to harvest the okras. And I told him to be extra careful. So he is being extra careful as you can see. And hopefully we can get all these okras harvested soon. But you can see the long okras. They are quite big, quite long. And this is one thing that differentiates the Nombo Giant Okra from the other okra varieties is the size of the pod. Now you do have to be careful that you harvest your okras right on time. If you delay too much, these okras can get long pretty quick. You know, there are times in the day when the okra would be like small in the morning and then quite large by afternoon. So just make sure you check your okras at least twice a day. During this time, they grow quite fast during the day. It's pretty alarming how quickly they can grow. And you can see here the okras, they look beautiful. And we continue to harvest okra from this plant for quite a few days. And it actually was quite a good supply of okras. Although we consume a lot of okra, so we definitely needed more. But as you can see, beautiful looking okras that you can get for quite some time from your home garden. Moving on to peppers. We had several varieties of peppers that were growing. This is the bell pepper. This is the bonny green bell pepper that was growing on the raised bed. And quite good looking pepper, quite large as well. And I've noticed that the peppers that were growing on the raised beds were slightly larger than the ones growing in the container. But I don't think that's a criteria. I think you can grow great peppers anywhere, like these candy cane peppers, which we are growing for the first time. They look quite good. And they are again a type of sweet pepper. They don't get too large. But I think they are excellent looking and you can cook them just like you would use bell peppers, sweet bell peppers. And this is called candy cane pepper because of the stripes on the top part of the pepper. And you can see all our peppers here, they look quite amazing. And we also have some other pepper varieties that are still growing, which are not ready for harvest yet. Like the giant Marconi pepper, the Poblano pepper. And we also have some bird's eye chili peppers that we harvested. Now this was growing in a container. This was one of the first peppers that we planted. They were growing indoors. And these pepper plants produce a lot of peppers. And they are quite hot. So if you are looking for nice spicy peppers, the bird's eye chili pepper will not disappoint you. These are excellent quality peppers. And they do produce a lot of peppers. We were able to harvest peppers from this plant almost every week. And every time we harvested, we got a few peppers. So overall, I'm quite pleased with the way the bird's eye chili pepper has produced all these hot peppers. And the peppers look quite nice, quite healthy. And we are also harvesting some red peppers here. So once the peppers ripen, they do turn red. And you can see the green ones along with the red ones. They look quite beautiful. And we also had some bell peppers that were growing in our container. So these are the bell peppers that we harvested from the container 
And as you can see, they're still decently sized. It's not like they're too small. And this is the green bell pepper again. This is one of the most commonly consumed peppers. So a lot of gardeners like growing these peppers. So yeah, I would highly recommend you trying growing these bell peppers. And after a long time, you can see the peppers that I've harvested look a little decent. I had been struggling to grow peppers for quite some time. But this year I made sure that I use fish emulsion and I also use worm tea. I think the earthworm tea makes a huge difference in growing peppers. So all in all, I was quite happy with the way the peppers grew this season. Moving on to pineapple ground cherries. This is the first time we tried growing pineapple ground cherries. And this is an excellent fruit to grow. I would just call it a fruit. And you can see these fruits are inside these little husks that you can see. And they're a bright yellow color. And when I tried this pineapple ground cherry for the first time, I can tell you the taste is something like a very sweet tomatillo or tomato. It does have the distinct pineapple flavor as well. So I was actually quite pleased with the taste of these uh, pineapple ground cherries. Very interesting, very unique vegetable or fruit, whatever you want to call it. Let's just call it a fruit because it's technically a fruit. And there were a lot of pineapple ground cherries just lying around the plants. And once the pineapple cherries ripen, they just fall off. And that's when you can pick them. I think the cherries that were still on the plants were a little raw. But the ones that had fallen down, as you can see here, these are beautiful cherries that you can harvest. And this makes for an excellent ground cover as well. As you can see, the pineapple ground cherries are covering up the ground slowly. And they're making an excellent ground cover. So I think I'll be planting some more pineapple ground cherries the next time I grow them. Just because they can span a lot of area here on the raised beds. So here is how our harvest looks like. These are the pineapple ground cherries. And we are going to be removing the husk on top of these pineapple ground cherries. As you can see, they look exactly like tomatillos, miniature tomatillos. But they do pack a punch. They are sweet. They do taste like a fruit from the nightshade family. And they do have the pineapple flavor in them. So all in all, a very interesting plant to grow in your home garden. It's a very delicious fruit that it produces. And something different and something unique that you can all try growing in your home garden. Next up, we have strawberries. Now our strawberries are growing in this vertical planter. This is an IKEA vertical planter that I used to keep pots inside them. What I did is I stacked three of these together and I drilled some holes in the bottom. And this makes for a very good vertical planter. However, the one problem that I have is watering them. When you water these planters, the watering is not even. And I have a solution to that, which is coming up pretty soon. There is a vertical planter that also lets you self water or automatically water all the chambers or all the tiers. So that's coming up quite soon. Moving on to tomatoes. Most of our tomatoes that we harvested this month was from our husky cherry red tomato. This is one of the most prolific tomato varieties I have grown. And you can see that the plant is quite loaded with tomatoes. And we were able to harvest tomatoes like this several times. You can see another batch of tomatoes that we harvested from this husky cherry red tomato plant. And here's one more batch. So all in all, several times we were able to harvest a lot of tomatoes from just this one plant that was growing in this whiskey barrel container. Now for some harvests of tomatoes from our raised beds. The first tomato we harvested was the grape tomato. Not a very prolific tomato in my opinion, at least on this raised bed. But we were able to harvest some of the grape sized tomatoes. They are slightly larger than the cherry tomatoes and they look quite good. And here you can see how the harvest looks like. They look quite amazing. And now let's look at the things for you to do this month. Beginning with a very interesting container trellis. We built this container trellis for two of our containers. And they fit right into whiskey barrel sized containers like these. So it's a very interesting addition to your home garden. I think this trellis solved a lot of my trellis problems. It just goes right between the containers. And you can get all your parts for making this trellis from the Home Depot. You need a 42 by 84 steel wire remesh sheet. 
and you can find this very easily at your local Home Depot. This is the same remesh sheet we used for making our easy trellis earlier. You need some wire ties. Now make sure that when you are looking for wire ties, look for 8 inch cable ties that are thicker. Optionally, you can get some spray paint to paint your trellis before you make it. And this is totally optional. And you can see the spray paint actually creates a mess when it comes to painting. So you can even use a brush and just use a regular paint can. So the first step here is to make sure that we are bending the trellis on the long side. The trellis is quite tall and you want to make sure that you're bending it on the long side, not on the short side. So to bend the trellis, you can just start bending it like little by little. Now the trellis is a little malleable. The material is malleable, but not too malleable. Like you have to apply a little bit of force to start pushing it in the right direction so that it forms a circle. So I think it's quite intuitive and quite easy to see what we are trying to do here. We're just trying to bend the trellis and you can use a little bit of force from your feet. And that really helped me bend this trellis a little better in a faster way. And it does take some time. So don't hurry up this process. Just take your time. Just make sure that you're bending the trellis slowly. You don't want to apply too much force. But at the same time, you want to make sure that the trellis is shaping up into the shape that you need it. Now, even if it's not a perfect circle at this stage, that's fine. It'll be more of a teardrop shaped trellis and that's perfectly fine. Don't worry too much about it at this stage. Because once you start assembling the trellis and once it starts getting into the shape that you desire, it's very easy to just bend it a little bit more and get the final shape that is very close to a cylinder. So our goal is to get it into that cylindrical shape that we want our trellis to look like. And now you can see the trellis is shaping up quite well. And you need to get it to a point where you can actually tie a wire tie right in the center. And as long as you can do that, as you see here, it's very easy to then tie the other ones and then continue shaping your trellis. So you don't really have to make it a complete circle on the first try. You can get it as close as possible and use the wire ties to keep them in place. And the wire ties are quite strong as long as you use 8 inch wire ties. There's no way this trellis is going anywhere. It's going to be tightly shut closed and it will eventually get to the shape that you desire. Now you can use multiple wire ties. I used about 6 I believe on this one. But there's no real hard and fast rule. You can use as many as you want to make sure that the trellis is kept intact. As you can see here after the wire ties have been put in. You can still continue to shape the trellis as you see here. And if you apply too much force, it does get a little misshapen. So just be careful about that. But you get the idea. Once you put the zip ties, it's very easy to shape this into a very decent size, a very manageable cylindrical size. And you just cut off the zip tie ends to create this beautiful trellis, which is quite tall, 84 inches tall. But if you put it in the whiskey barrel container, it's still quite a tall trellis. So we already had soil in this whiskey barrel container. So we just had to remove some soil and push this trellis in. If you have a new container, you can just add the trellis first and then fill it up with soil. But overall, this was an easy process. We just removed a little bit of soil, pushed the trellis in and it stayed exactly where we wanted it to be. So you can see that the trellis is actually about a foot inside the container. So it gives it a lot more stability. And we're going to be adding the soil inside the container. So as you saw, we had the pole beans trellis, which was outside the pot. Now, I don't like the idea of having a trellis outside the pot. Inside the container, of course, it looks really good. As you can see here, this trellis is fully inside the container and gives you a lot more space for the plants to grow. And growth wise, it's not going to create a lot of difference. The beans will climb on the wooden trellis, but in this case, the plants that I'm planting here are going to climb from the inside. So you get room both on the inside and outside part of the trellis. And that's why I think this trellis design idea works really well. And it's just such an easy idea. 
I'm pretty sure any one of you could do it. Just go to Home Depot, get your materials and start assembling. Now for added support, you can add a couple more rebars or any kind of supporting structure. In this case, I had some of these steel stakes that were lying around. So I'm just using these to secure the trellis even better. So I'm just tying these with zip ties to the sides of the trellis. And you can use rebars, you can use any kind of supporting structure and this is totally optional. Even if you don't do this, I'm pretty sure the trellis will stay inside your container and not go anywhere. There's always a good idea to secure your trellis, especially when you're in high wind areas. Our next thing to do is to do our worm tea applications every month. And I've been doing this in my garden for quite some time now. This is the Vermistera worm tea. And I just use this in a watering can and water all my plants. So as you can see, initially, a few days ago, the pineapple ground cherries as well as the eggplants were not that big. But after regular worm tea applications and fish emulsion and the steer manure that we added to this bed, all these plants grew quite well. And you can clearly see the progress this month. The plants have grown quite large. And a lot of you have asked me how often do I do my worm tea application. So it's usually about once in either 7 days or 10 days depending on how much time I have or when I am able to water the plants. But yes, about 10 days is quite a good interval to start using for your worm tea application. It works quite well. Now let's move on to the recipe section of our video. Today we'll show you how to make fenugreek puris. You will need some fresh fenugreek. You will need flour. We're using wheat flour here. You will need some other ingredients that you see on your screen here. So the first step is to wash your harvested fenugreek greens very nicely. And once that's done, you need to just pick out the leaves and leave out the hard stems. Now some people prefer to use the stems. I prefer not to, just use the leaves. But it's up to you if you want to use a little bit of the stems, that's fine. But for the most part, you will need the delicate part of the plant. And all you do is take all the fenugreek greens that you harvested. And after cleaning them up, you just remove the leaves and the tender parts and keep them aside. And this is how it looks like after you remove the stems and just leave the leaves and the greens, the delicate part of the fenugreek. This is what we'll use for our recipe. The next step is to chop it up. You can just chop it up just like you see here into very fine pieces. And now we take our flour, two cups of flour, and then we add in the chopped fenugreek greens and then start mixing it with water. You need a little bit of water, but before that, let's add all our ingredients. These are the carom seeds that we are adding. We then add the chili powder. We will now add the optional asafoetida. And then add the turmeric powder. We then add salt as needed. And then just mix up everything very well. And this is the time you can use some water to mix in everything. And depending on the consistency of your current flour and fenugreek combination, you can keep kneading it and then add some oil and then just keep kneading it, adding water along the way. Your goal is to make a nice consistency dough. which will then be used to make the puris. And then now you just take the dough that you made and then you roll it into small balls. And then just flatten them as you see here, just like you make tortillas.
So we're going to make a couple of these before we start frying them. And you can use a bowl or something round in shape to shape up your puris so that they look pretty. And then we're just going to fry them in oil. These are deep fried. Now if you have an air fryer and you just want to avoid using a lot of oil, you can just brush it with oil and then air fry it. We just like ours fried this way. It just tastes a lot better. And fenugreek has a lot of health benefits. A lot of you have asked me how I use my harvest, you know, some recipes around what we harvest. So this is one of the recipes that we commonly use. These are very delicious. And you just fry it for some time till they become golden brown. And once it's golden brown, you can just take it out. And then let the oil drain on a piece of paper towel. And then we're going to fry our next one as well. These puris are absolutely delicious. And once this is golden brown, you can take this one out as well. And there we have it. That's how our puris look like. They're absolutely delicious. And you can eat them with ketchup or yogurt or just eat them as is they taste amazing so i hope you like this recipe and now we are announcing our seed giveaway winners we had provided the details of the seed giveaway in one of our previous monthly episodes and we got an overwhelming response thanks for everyone who put in comments for suggestions on our new california garden i think all of these were excellent suggestions and we really wanted to thank you very much for providing all the valuable feedback. It was really difficult to choose the list of winners from all the wonderful comments. However, we chose these winners that you see on your screen here. So if your name is listed here, congratulations. And I'll let you know what the next steps are. So the first thing to do is to contact me via the channel page. And once you contact me, I need an address where to ship the seeds. You have an option to choose either the hyacinth bean seeds or if you do not want to grow hyacinth beans, I also have wonderful long radish seeds, the daikon kind of radish. So let me know what your preference is and I will send out a seed packet to the address you provided. So there we have it folks. That was our episode on the California garden for the month of June 2020. If you like this video, do give us a thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you get all future updates. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.